Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yes, today guys, we are gonna do part number two. That's right, part number two of the dedicated Nintendo versus Upright Arcade Game Restore. That's right, because part number one, as far as I know, part number one was the Sanyo 20 Easy Rebuild, because we rebuilt the monitor that is in this game in a previous video. But today, we're gonna go in the garage and we're gonna work on the cabinet itself because we have a little bit of woodworking ahead of us. And, and by the way, this project, I, I kind of hinted a little bit about this project, okay? Uh, it, it is a top secret project. I can't tell you guys what it is just yet because it is a gift. It's a gift for somebody, somebody pretty cool too. Somebody you, you might know, okay? And, and I was asked to put this game together so we're gonna be working on the cabinet but I'm not gonna tell you what the game's gonna be just yet because I cannot reveal it until the person gets the game and again, it's a gift so I, I have to be a little tight-lipped here but we're gonna be putting a certain PCB in this game and then also we have a marquee that is gonna reveal the title and we're not gonna do it just yet but in this video we're gonna work on the cabinet itself because right now this game is oh it's about a 7 out of 10 it's not perfect it's close and we're gonna go through the game and just really work on all the structural stuff you know the, the crumbling particle board we're gonna take care of all that stuff uh, I, I want to rebuild the control panel so it's like brand new we're gonna take apart the uh, Nintendo joysticks and rebuild both of them uh, we're gonna put new buttons on there. I got some Mike's Arcade reproduction buttons we're gonna put on. So really, we're gonna go through the game, we're gonna fine tune the control panel and really just handle and take care of all the patching of the wood and, and Bondo work and stuff like that in this, in this video. Um, so, and then also, uh, before we start, before we go to the garage, I, I do wanna remind you guys that I'm gonna be at Grinker's Grand Palace October 9th and 10th in Eagle, Idaho. That's right, we're doing an Arcade Outsiders tournament there called Grink Fest. So, me, Joe, and Sean are going to be there. We're going to be doing live podcasts uh, there uh, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. That's next week, October 8th, 9th, and 10th. Um, and we're going to be putting on a tournament October 9th and 10th. So if you guys can somehow get to Eagle, Idaho, you want to make it to this because it's going to be awesome. It's Grinker's Grand Palace. If you go to ArcadeOutsiders.com, there's a little poster that shows the dates. And then there's hotel information listed if you scroll down. So be sure to check that out. But anyway, okay. Enough of that. Uh, let, let's go to the garage and let's work on this Nintendo versus cabinet. And uh, I, I need to get this project done like in the next week here. So we'll be done soon and I'll be able to reveal exactly what we're doing. But for now, let's go to the garage and get working on that Nintendo verse. All right, guys, let's go to the garage. All right, guys, we are back in the garage. And by the way, fall, fall is in the air. <laughs> It's cold out here. I got shorts on, but I'm feeling like it's it's uh, it's jean weather here. I, I should be wearing jeans and a sweatshirt or something. I was tempted to start my little uh, propane uh, heater. It is chilly uh, this morning, but anyway, okay, what are we doing? And by the way, I clean up the garage. How's it looking here? <laughs> Push the games back, and, and Pro Monaco GP is living right there right now, and uh, I don't know what we're gonna do with that game. <laughs> I've been playing it and I'm thinking about what's going on with it. We'll, we'll see what happens. For, for now, it's it's gonna live right there, okay? And uh, it's funny, uh, some guys on Clov, I, I didn't realize this, pointed out that this is the wrong steering wheel. Because uh, the, the, the center hub here, I believe, is, is correct, but the steering wheel itself is wrong. Because um, the steering wheel should be more flat, and, and this one is not, you can see it's, it's really deep how it it it, uh, it kind of tapers in here, so that's not original, I guess. And someone had said the the brake, uh, the gas pedal also isn't original. Um, I'll tell you this though, I I've been playing the game the last day here, and it's pretty fun. Um, I noticed that it is missing some sounds, uh, like when the fire truck shows up. I think it's supposed to play some kind of like. Uh, fire truck siren sounds or something that's not happening at all but uh, anyway for now it's right there okay so what are we doing in this video well in this video guys I'm I plan on on uh, really finishing this game right here um, so f and by the way this is a Nintendo versus Unisystem this is a, the original dedicated cabinet okay 
And yes, this is a top secret project. <laughs> I don't have a marquee on here for a reason. Uh, because uh, this game is going to be a gift for somebody, and uh, I, I cannot reveal it yet because it is a surprise. But uh, if all goes as planned here, this game is going to be leaving the garage within the next week here. Right now, I have Excite Bike in here. Um, there's massive glare here, if you guys can see, but uh, we have Excite Bike in there right now. Um, and I'm going to put a different PCB in there with a different game and a new marquee and, and, and then it's going to leave. But first we need to address the cabinet. Um, the, the cabinet in general is about, oh, I don't know, 80% there. And uh, I just need to finish the last 20%. The, the gray, the original gray sides in general are pretty good. There are some flaws that I absolutely have to address. Um, I, I can't send this off with some of these uh, flaws on here. And, and one of the, the biggest one is right here, okay? And so this is broken off here. And if you go on this side, you can see it's just hosed. So we have to address that. And I wanna do that first in this video. Actually, what, what we're gonna do in the video first here is all the Bondo work. So I'm gonna Bondo the inside of this, okay? And we're gonna paint this black. And then we're going to put some Bondo on the, I'm going to glue this piece first, and then we're going to put some Bondo on this side, and I'm going to touch it up, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys know this or, or can tell, but, okay, so this little piece right here, I actually took out, and I brought it to Ace Hardware, okay? So I brought this piece of wood to Ace Hardware, and I said, can you guys match this color, okay? And so they took this little piece and they put it in their little computer thing with the little laser sensor or whatever it is, uh, infrared, I don't, I don't know what it uses, but there's some kind of an eye that looks at this. And so they mixed me up a little pint of paint, okay? So I have a pint of, of touch-up paint that we're gonna use. Now, look at this. This piece right here is painted. It's half painted, okay? The, the right side here has paint on it. I don't know if you guys can see this. And the left side does not. This, this paint they mixed me is dead nuts on. Like, it, it is like right on the money. So I feel really good about this because we're, we're gonna basically bondo this area up here and then we're gonna touch it up with that paint. Now, I think it's gonna just disappear. And we probably, while we're doing it, should probably just tighten up some of these corners and some of these scratches with Bondo and we'll just sand it down. I don't wanna go too crazy here with the Bondo and the paint because really, in general, the gray on this is is 95% okay. Um, I just want to address the, the, the really major flaws. Now someone tried touching this up here. Now you could see someone previously did some kind of Bondo work here, okay? And they painted it white, so we'll undo that. We'll, we'll sand this down and we'll use our new touch-up paint and get rid of that white, and same thing on that bottom corner. And then in the front here, there is a crack right here. And uh, so I, we have to, I'm gonna see if we can address that too with a little bit of Bondo. We're gonna have to take this coin door off in order to really do that. And then same thing right here. We should come in here and just put a little bit of Bondo and paint. And uh, I, I think that that's gonna go pretty quick. Um, the first thing I need to do is remove the T-molding. And uh, I wanna talk about the T-molding uh, because this cabinet um, has offset T-molding, okay, and um, it's uh, it's unique and it's unavailable, and there's a reason why, and I'm going to show you what they did, okay. So this cabinet, I think the cabinet itself is like five eighths of an inch thick. Um, so let me show you what's going on. Where's my tape measure? Uh, let me get my tape measure and I'll show you guys exactly what's going on because the cabinet. Um, I think it's five eighths of an inch thick, um, and, but it's using an offset T molding, or at least it appears it is, but it, it's actually not. So if we were to measure this, okay, it is. Uh, let's see, yeah, it's five eighths, okay. And if you look at it closely, you can see the groove is off center, okay. The T-molding groove is not in the center. It's favoring this side, the left side, the left side. And then on this side over here, if we were to look, um, you could see that it's favoring the outside. Now, if we look really close here, and, and by the way, Sean Fetish Boy Williams tipped me off on this. He said, if you look at it, you'll, you'll see that the crown 
is off centered. Because what they did is, see right here, the crown is like right here. They took three quarter inch T-molding, put it on a 5 8 inch cabinet with offset T, with an offset groove, and then they trimmed it. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do. So I, I ordered some three quarter inch T-molding that I don't have yet. But I wanna tell you guys this before we remove the T-molding. So I ordered some three quarter inch T-molding and then uh, Uncle Tiggy, Uncle Ty, he had posted a link to this thing on Twitter or something. I don't know, it came up, but, but I, I found out from Ty that this thing exists. So I ordered one of these and this is a T-molding trimmer. And so we'll be able to put our three quarter inch T-molding on here and then take this thing and just slice it down flush with the cabinet. And it, it'll look pro and original. So I'm pretty excited about that. So when, we get, when, we, when we're all done here, we'll get the three quarter inch T-molding, put it on here, and then we'll come through with this thing and just cut off the uh, excess. So I think that's gonna work really great. Because if, if you go looking for 5 8 offset T-molding, it doesn't exist. And uh, it's because, and, it, do, and I don't, it probably has never existed because Nintendo didn't use it. All right, so let's take off this T-molding because it's the only way we can get to uh, kind of thinking about maybe not removing it completely just yet. So I want to address this section right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this original piece back in here because we might as well take advantage of this perfect little puzzle piece. So let's glue this in here and then just kind of leave it, let it sit for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. So I'm gonna come in with some wood glue. And we're just gonna glue this guy in here. And I, got, I gotta be careful I don't make too much of a mess. When I, when I glued my jump bug, man, when, when this glue dries, it's not trivial to sand it. You, you, think, you, you think you'd be able to sand it very easily, you can't. So really get rid of the excess glue because I made that mistake on jump bug and, and I really had a gluey mess on my hands. I should probably turn the game off, but whatever, all right. So I don't think we're gonna, I need to clamp this or anything. I think we can just put this in here. Maybe I could put a little bit of weight on the top of it to kind of push down on this. I'm just thankful that I have this little piece because um, it's going to make it easy for me to bondo the inside edge. So I'm just going to put a little bit of weight on here. This isn't going to work, is it? Eh, it might. All right, so I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll be back in like 10 minutes or so. All right, actually, while that's drying, why don't we do the control panel really fast? Um, I was reading the glue uh, bottle, and it said to let it dry for at least a half hour, really 24 hours before you stress it. So I think what I want to do is I want to work on the control panel, and we'll let that glue dry, and then maybe this will take us about take me about an hour, take you guys maybe less in, in video, <laughs> in video time. But uh, let's do this control panel really fast. So right now, see when I got this game, it was a Hogan's Alley, and it had a gun. Okay, and so the gun, the game that we're gonna make, I need two joysticks on here because that that is how these cabinets came originally. So from the factory, if it wasn't a gun game, they they had two joysticks and then two buttons, two buttons, and two buttons. Okay, now someone tried replacing the original buttons right here with these kind of standard buttons and they don't fit in the holes and so they weren't able to get them all the way in. Now I, I've since ordered new buttons from Mike's Arcade. I, now his reproductions are, are good enough. Um, I know we talked about that in a previous video. The, the Mike's Arcade Nintendo buttons are fine. I, you know, I have them on a lot of my games. They're on my Donkey Kong, my Donkey Kong Jr., my Mario Brothers. They all, I, all, I have all those buttons down there. Now, they do have a little bit of a different feel uh, because the curvature on them and the button height is a little different, but they're absolutely fine buttons. They play fine and they look okay and they look nice and clean. So we're going to replace these with the Mike's Arcade ones. But this control panel here, I'm not sure we're going to use this one. I have a spare that I think is in better shape because this one's got a lot of nicks and stuff and I think the one I have over there is better. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer all of these guts to another control panel and then we're also going to steal the joystick off my other control panel but we need to 
disconnect this first, and there's just two Molex connectors right here. Okay, so let's let's bring this over to the table. And my little Bondo weight just fell. Uh, Alright, so let's let this glue dry. And then let's go over here to the table and get working on our Nintendo versus control panel. Um, I think we should maybe rebuild the joysticks a little bit too. But let me get my socket set. And I want to start stripping uh, my old control panel. It does have some rust on the inside. We probably should sand as much of that away as we can. Um, all right, so here's the one that came on the game. Now this one isn't rusting on the inside, which is a bonus, but this one is a spare one I had, which is in better shape, I think, but it's got some rust on the inside, so I, I don't want to ship this off with rust. So I think we should sand all that off and maybe spray some clear coat on there. I'm not sure, um, but let's get all this stuff off of here. And so this joystick here is complete, so we're going to use that one. This one's missing the leaf switches. And yeah, Nintendo did use leaf switches back in the day um, on their joysticks. They were one of the first, I think, to, to really standardize with leaf switches. Because all the games from this era, from the 80s, typically have leaf switches. And Nintendo used used a uh, micro, so you can see all these are little little uh, mechanical switches instead of just two two little leaf uh, blades touching each other, which is what pretty much every other arcade game out there uses in the 80s. All right, so let's go ahead and pull all this stuff off of here. And I think I'm just going to take both these control panels, like this here. The latch is all bent. So we'll, we'll steal that from the other one. So we'll just, I'll basically just combine the two and make the best control panel I can for this project. So let's get all these screws and nuts off of here. I got all the screws loose here, so we just gotta pop off this one uh, switch that's right here. We just have a big pal nut we gotta deal with, and you can usually get it with channel locks or it's really on there. Okay, so the joysticks right now, they're not gonna fall out because of the ball. So we gotta remove the joystick. Um, so there is a little uh, E-clip on here that we're gonna have to pull off. Uh, and man, I haven't worked on a Nintendo joystick in a long time. <laughs> I'm realizing that now. Cause I used to rebuild these joysticks left and right, like the first first couple years of me in this hobby was me doing nothing but Nintendo cabinets. I mean, that is all I did. I used to sit at my kitchen table and rebuild these joysticks all the time. And uh, it's funny, I'm looking at it, it kind of looks a little foreign, but uh, so there's a clip in here. We got to somehow get it on this. I don't remember how I used to pull these off. I think I used to use a screwdriver and come from one side. Ah, these little clips are tricky. They, they're kind of like a horseshoe, and there's really no good spot to grab them. Oh, John, how did you used to do this? I remember messing around with these clips a long time ago. I think I used to take my pliers and push both of those little horseshoe. And this thing's gonna fly across the room. Uh, I gotta do four of these, three of them. Uh, 
Come on. Uh, hmm. Let me show you guys what's going on here. So if you could see, there is a clip, okay, that is flush. Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, that's what I need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some space. So this is spring-loaded, and the clip is sitting on top of it. So if we lower that, then I can come in with my pliers and pull it off. So let's come in with a screwdriver, and we're going to lower this, and then we can get our pliers on here and pull. Boy, this is annoying. All right, so lower it, pliers. I probably haven't had to redo one of rebuild one of these joysticks, take one apart in like six years. It's like I got all my Nintendo stuff squared away a long time ago and I just haven't had to really revisit it. Which is why there's not a lot of Nintendo videos because I really did all that work so long ago I wasn't really filming my restores. Oh man. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to keep trying this like 1,000 times until I get it off. <laughs> but... Okay, I just got it off. I just took a little jeweler screwdriver and tried to get it in the little space between the clip and the post and it, it came off. Super annoying. Uh, it, it took me... I've been screwing around for the last 10 minutes off camera. <laughs> so I, I cut away because I didn't want you guys to just sit there watching me fumble with that for 10 minutes. Let's see if we can get this one using the same technique. And there's a little bit of a gap. And I'm just trying to get this screwdriver to go in this little gap here. And it's minute. Yeah, there it is. So you need a really fine screwdriver. Yep, yep there you go. So it's loose. So now I'm going to come in with my pliers. If you guys can see what's happening here. So I basically got it loose with this little screwdriver. Got it started. And we just pull it out with the screwdriver, I guess. There we go. All right. The first one was hard. The second one was easy. <laughs> so use a little screwdriver. That definitely worked the best than trying to get the pliers to pull it off. All right, so everything should just kind of fall off now. Um, oh, it's funny. <laughs> oh, John, stupid. You know what? I didn't even need to take the the the, uh, the the pin off the joystick because it fits through there. Oh my God. So what I just did, you didn't even need to do. Because I was thinking the ball was too big to fit through the control panel. That's not the case at all. Well, anyway, we just learned how to take the joystick apart, which we're going to have to do anyway. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these back on here just so the joystick doesn't explode on me. Okay, I have the joysticks back together here. So these are Versus joysticks, and uh, they're very similar to what's on the Donkey Kong, except the, uh, the shaft length is different. Um, they do have these little spacer plates uh, that also you'll find like on Donkey Kong 3. They would use this stuff like on the metal control panels. Um, but these joysticks are not identical to Donkey Kong in, in shaft length. Uh, I think the ball, is the ball the same size? I don't remember. I used to know every little detail about this stuff uh, like five, six, seven years ago. But I haven't really had to seek any of this stuff out like I did a long time ago. And a long time ago when I was looking for this stuff constantly, I, I knew like every little detail about these joysticks and what was what. But um, the Versus ones are different though. They're, they're not the same as Donkey Kong or Popeye or Junior um, or DK3. Alright, so we got the control panel here. I want to save all of these little carriage bolts. And again, we didn't need to pull the uh, the pin off the joystick to get it out of this control panel. That was a mistake. I didn't need to do that. All right, so let's clean this thing up. We'll put this one to the side for now. 
So I'm just gonna take like a magic eraser to this and let's see how clean, clean we can get it. And then also, uh, I wanna sand the underside and get all that rust off of here. So let me grab uh, a magic eraser and, and let's just kinda go to town on this thing. All right, guys, we're all clean here. I think this looks actually really good and workable. Um, Magic Eraser just does a fantastic job getting rid of all this old stuff. So I, I think we're all ready here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to sand all that rust off the bottom and then we'll seal it up with a little bit of clear. Um, but let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. Let's go over here and uh, I'm just gonna take my palm sander to this thing. Let's just clean this guy up. Let me get an extension cord here. So I'm just taking some 100 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna go to town on this thing. All right, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I got most of the uh, rust off. There's just a little bit of spots, but really, in general, it looks way better than it did. So I'm just gonna wipe it down here and get all the sanding dust off of here. And I'm gonna spray this with a little bit of clear lacquer just to kind of seal it up. Um, so I'm just gonna mask this off. Like so. And we'll just kind of hit this thing with clear lacquer. Okay, so I picked up some just instant drying lacquer, uh, Ace Hardware brand. And I'm just going to uh, just hit the metal just to kind of help seal it up. And maybe, maybe just move this down a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is just because when I sanded it, I removed uh, whatever finish was originally on here that was protecting the metal. And so if we hit it with this lacquer, we'll seal it back up and it'll give it a, a chance of not rusting again. So let me grab a, a box here. So we'll just hit this thing with some clear lacquer. And this is instant drying clear lacquer, which I've never used before. I'm just curious how this is going to work. All right, we'll just let that dry for a few minutes. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is I want to rebuild the joysticks. <clears throat> we're going to take them completely apart. So let's figure out which joysticks we're going to use. Um, so we've got these two right here. <clears throat> from the uh, donor control panel, okay? And then I have the one that's on this one, which I'm definitely gonna use. So let's remove these micro switch um, connections here. This joystick's in actually really good shape. I don't even know if we need to rebuild it, but we might as well just take it apart and just clean it up. Because this is actually in really good shape. So we're just going to remove <clears throat> all eight of these connectors for the switches. And we got to really actually remember how it was. Because there's three prongs on these switches, and I think uh, one is like normally open and the other is normally closed, depending on how you select it. 
and we want the two outside ones. The bottom one is the ground, I believe, and then we want the uh, the bottom prong on these two, and we can co compare over here. So, all right, let's get this joystick off real quick. Okay, we have our two joysticks, and so the thing about Nintendo joysticks, which is great, is that they're all metal, okay? And they really don't wear out, okay? And these are eight-way joysticks, by the way, and you can tell by the restrictor plate down here, okay? It's kind of a, a circle pattern, um, like on a Donkey Kong or DK3 or Junior or Popeye, it's gonna be a four-way joystick and you're gonna have a four-way restrictor, which is more like a plus sign, and this one has more of a circle sign so that you can do diagonals, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take these apart and just clean every single part. And uh, it's really the only way to clean these joysticks. And again, because it's all metal, uh, there's really nothing that wears out on these. It's just a function of taking them apart and then putting them back together. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to remove this pin again. And I'm going to use a tiny screwdriver and just kind of get in here and pull this pin out. I mean this E-clip, C-clip out, okay? And then once you take that C-clip out, this whole thing just pops off like so, okay? And you can see it's just all gummed up. And so let's get this spring out of here, okay? And now we can remove all this stuff. All right, and then, so this is just all gummy in here. Um, we could take these switches off, which we probably should so we can really clean this thing and not compromise them. Um, what I've used in the past to clean these is actually electrical contact cleaner. Um, it actually works really well. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the, all the micro switches, and then we can just focus on just the metal piece here and get these out of the way. So let's just come in here and just remove each of these. And then there's a little bit of a, there's like a spacer below right there. Let me just make sure that this is all in the camera and it's not. <laughs> um, all right, so let's just go ahead and remove all these switches. And I just basically want to get every part off so we can individually clean them. And after you take these apart and clean them, they're really just like new. And then when we lube them up, we're just gonna use like a silicon spray. And then let's go ahead and take the restrictor plate off. Uh, just be careful you don't strip these. I remember in the past those screws are easy to strip. And you probably shouldn't be a John, and, and you should use a uh, <laughs> a, uh, a normal screwdriver. Don't try to do it with an electric one. And I just want to get every single part off. Okay. All right. So this this part here. There's like a little metal ball thing that's captured in the middle. And so we really want to clean that up really well. So let me get some cleaner here. Um, uh, maybe we'll hit it with some simple green first and just get all the loose gunk off. And I think I might sand this down a little bit. Because it's kind of rusty in here. Kind of, so I really want to clean that ball up really well and get all that simple green off of there. Okay. I'm gonna get some electronics uh, cleaner. <clears throat> and I use this stuff because it evaporates, displaces water. Um, I 
I used to always clean my my Nintendo joysticks with electronics cleaner, and don't ask me why, but it just works well for getting the gunk out. And this is deoxit, which is kind of expensive to use for this, but. And I've used brake cleaner before to clean metal, uh, especially with control panels, when you're trying to get all the glue off and stuff. But you can see this stuff really gets the gunk off. Feels pretty good. All right, so let's kind of clean this guy up here. See, that looks pretty good. We could take some light grit sandpaper and just really clean it up. So I'm going to go through here and just spray all these components with my cleaner. That spring. So everything's just really gummy. And you just get all that grease off and dirt and it's like a brand new joystick when you put it back together. So that's pretty clean. These guys are clean. So I'm going to keep going through here and just clean everything up and then we'll put it back together. But you could just see all that grease that's coming off. Even our little clip here is messed up. And our switches are all filthy. I'll just kind of come in here and clean it. <clears throat> Our actuator. So that's really it. I mean, just clean all the parts, take every single part off the joystick, clean it up, and then just put it back together. And then we'll lube it up with some silicon lube. Really, we're just lubing this area right in here, this little ball, because that's really where all the movement is. It all takes place right there. Okay, so I'm going to get some really high grit sandpaper, maybe... Uh, Let's see, 2,000 grit, or I don't know what I have over here. Here's 600. That would work. So let's take a little bit of 600 grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to use that to just kind of clean up this shaft. Just get all the surface corrosion off. Let me take some of this 100, and I'll go back over it with 6. And then we'll take our 6 to kind of smooth it out. That looks pretty good. And then we could take, let me take some of the six on here. And I just want to get all that surface rust off of here. And if the higher grit doesn't cut it, I'll just go back down to 100. And 
then just kind of clean it up with the six. Pretty good. It's better than it did. Okay, and then we'll just wipe it down. I think that base is pretty good there. Definitely looks a lot better than it did. And I'll just spray a little bit more of this in here. Just want to get all that grease out of that ball. So that's really it. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this back together and then I'll rebuild the other one the exact same way. Just take every part off and clean every single part and then just put it all back together. And that ball right there, you can see how it rotates. And I'm just kind of rotating it and cleaning it up. See that? Looks good. All right, so I'm going to wipe everything down let it dry, and then I'll do the same exact thing to the other joystick, and then we'll put it all back together exactly the same way we took it apart. Okay, our uh, joysticks are all rebuilt. Uh, they're like brand new guys. And really, again, these Nintendo joysticks, it's just a function of taking them apart, cleaning it up, clean, clean, cleaning all the metal parts, getting all the gunk and the grease and the dirt and the grime off, and then putting them back together. But these feel perfect. Now, the one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna lube up that little ball in the center and I'm gonna use some silicon spray, okay? Um, originally, it had like lithium grease on here, which I find kind of messy. So I, I use silicon spray, and it works just fine. So just lift up the dust washer, the dust washer like so, and just spray some in there, and get it on that ball, and then just kind of work it around, and then wipe off the excess when you're done. So just lift up the dust washer, and then you can get right on that ball. So like so, and you can see it's over, it's foaming up there. I'll just wipe all that off. And I like this stuff just because it's, it's not super messy. That lithium grease is just, it attracts dirt and grime and it gets everywhere. And the silicon spray works just fine. And then we'll just wipe off the excess. So those feel really good and they're ready for the game now. All right, so what I want to do next is we're going to transfer the guts from the old control panel to our new one. And by guts, I mean the switches and the harness. And I've got some buttons here from Mike's Arcade that we're going to use for the red and green one player and two player start buttons. Um, so I want to do this in a way where I can kind of keep track of stuff. Um, we're going to have to loosen all these Pell nuts. Um, just so we can get the buttons off. And the way the Nintendo buttons work is there's a, uh, there's like this hanger that holds the micro switch and then there's a spacer underneath it. And then the paddle nut holds it all together to the button. Boy, that's really on there. So I'm going to go ahead here and just loosen all of these pal nuts with my channel locks. These are really on there tight. Yeah, and see Nintendo used all this thread lock stuff and it's everywhere. 
And I think there's thread lock on this. Boy, this doesn't want to come off. Oh, the button's spinning. Terrific. The whole button is spinning here. Let's see if I can hold it in place. I don't want to break it. Uh, let's see if I can gently hold the button in place. Hmm. The whole button is spinning on this. Boy, that's really on there. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and remove all these Pell nuts, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have all the Pell nuts off and all the buttons loose. Now, we're going to keep these original Nintendo buttons because they're in really good shape, and but I'm going to clean them up a little bit. I'm just going to pull the E-clip uh, off each one, and then I'm going to drop this in uh, some simple green like so. I don't think I'm going to put the springs in there or the C-clip, but we'll just let that soak for a short while. And so we're just going to reuse these original Nintendo red and black ones. Okay. And you just pull the clip and then just drop them in. Some simple green or mean green. I'm using mean green. And we'll just let that soak for a few minutes and then we'll wipe them off before we put it back together. All right, so let me put these springs somewhere and these clips so we don't lose them. Four clips and four springs. All right, so we'll let this soak. I'll just put this to the side and then we'll, we'll wipe them down. So I just want to move these guts now from here to here and Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to do this in a way where everything kind of stays in place. And we're going to reuse these little wire holders. So what I'm going to do is just undo the wire holders on this one. And I can see I got a loose wire right there. We're going to have to put a new uh, spade connector on it. Okay, so this, I'm just going to lift this and transfer it over. That goes like that, and that goes like that, and then this goes like so. All right. So everything should kind of just fall into place. That's the one and two player start. It's the A and B buttons. The A and B buttons. And then our wires for the joystick. So this one here is missing a spade connector. And then these two go like so. All right, so everything's kind of in the right spot. Let's clean up our buttons really quick. Let's get rid of this. Um, I want to take the, the best um, carriage bolts from the two control panels to make the best one for our new game here. So. I'm going to have to go through all these carriage bolts and find the ones that are in the best condition. And let's kind of take a look at our buttons here. This isn't hard. I mean, it's just, you know, we're just trying to make it nice and clean every part. I really like to invest a lot of time in the control panel. I just think that, you know, it's your interface with the game and it's worth the effort. Because if you have nice playing joysticks and buttons and everything's clean and you want to touch the game, it just makes it a better experience. So let's just wipe these down. Get all the grime off of them. So I'm going to keep going in through these buttons here, and I'm just going to wipe them down, dry them off, and just make sure all the gunk is off of them. 
and then I'll be right back. All right, our buttons are all dry. I'm gonna just put them back together, and it's pretty simple. Just make sure there's no simple green in here. Spring, button, clip. Just be careful because these old buttons are brittle and they do break. Clips can be kind of tough to get on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these back together. Be back. Okay, I got all the buttons on, and, and I want to show you guys something, because um, there is an adjustment on these micro switches. Um, can you guys see uh, these screws right here? Okay, and you can adjust the angle of the switch. So like, if we test that one, it's good. You can hear it clicking. But if we look at these ones, not hitting the, but not hitting the switch. Okay, so these were moved by the operator because he put those non-original buttons in here and so he had to adjust the switches. So I already loosened this screw and we're just going to kind of bring it down like so. You see that? So if you just loosen this top screw and then this thing will rotate and then just spin it till it's touching but not activating the switch. You know, just have it a tiny bit above and then tighten it down. So that feels good. So I'm gonna do that for both of these one and two player start buttons. And you can't go too close because you'll activate the switch. So you just gotta just be a teeny tiny bit above the actual switch. That feels good. So here's how it looks. So uh, the red is the B button, black is A, and then these are from Mike's Arcade because I was missing these buttons. I had someone put red ones in here. So the one player start should be blue and the two players should be green. And I think those actually look really good. And they don't look too different. They look like they, look like they belong with these buttons. If you look closely though, you can see the originals sit a little bit higher than these Mike, Mike's Arcade ones but it's so trivial you'd have to really hunt for it so i feel pretty good about that all right so our buttons are all in so now we got to get the joysticks in um and i'm going to take some nice the best looking sets uh, of carriage bolts that i have because they're originally they had a chrome finish on them and hopefully i have eight really good looking ones so here's five six and looks like i do good all right, so we're gonna put the joysticks on. Now, I'm gonna be kind of guessing a little bit as to where the wires go um, on the joysticks, and we'll have to test it on the game. But here's the original carriage bolts. You know, they should have this nice chrome finish. And, and this is the type of part that's really hard to find on the market. Um, really small metric carriage bolts. Um, you know, the Don Donkey Kong control panels have them too. And they're tough to find. They're hard to replace. So if you have originals, cherish them <laughs> and don't lose them. All right, so we're just going to drop this in here like so. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and just put the four carriage bolts on each joystick and once bolted to the control panel.
Okay, uh, we're all done. So I put all the wires on, and I just kind of guessed where the wires go on the joysticks uh, because they're they're kind of in their in a natural spot where they want to go. So I think I did it right. Now this one here uh, was missing the spade connector, so I crimped a new connector on there. And then when you put these on, just remember they go on the outside, away from the switch. Usually, it, it doesn't matter. You can switch the ground and the signal, but the way Nintendo did it is all the grounds were on the outside of the switch, and then the signal or whatever you want to call it is on the and the middle one. And then the connector, the spade connector that is closest to the switch is left empty. Okay, so you want to use the two outside ones. So, all right, let's take a look here. How do we do? I think that looks really sharp. Uh, I do. Uh, and for all original, you're not going to get any better than this. This looks really great, nice and clean. Joysticks feel good. But let's test it out. Let's make sure our work is good, and let's make sure everything works still. So I'm going to come over here and, and just throw the control panel in. And there's two, two uh, connectors here on the right that we need to make. Um, so let me go ahead and make our connections. It's kind of a little tricky here. All right, so let's go ahead and make our two connections. One and two. Okay. And then let's drop our control panel in. A little bit of a tight fit. I might have to move these switches, maybe? Let me see. There we go. Okay, didn't want to drop in at first. All right, so let's turn the game on and let's see if it still works. Um, plug the game in here. All right. So let's play us some excite bike boy the glare is a killer man let me see if i can rotate the cabinet a little bit get rid of some of that glare is that better eh not really but Okay, so the one player button starts, works. So, up, down, up, down does not work on that one. Left works, right works, up, down, so that one's fine. And we overheated. So right doesn't work, and down doesn't work on this one. So right and down do not work on that joystick. So let's, let's see what's going on here. So up, down doesn't work, but left works. Right doesn't work. So, oh, right is down. Oh, I, I think I have right and down mixed up. So right is this switch, and then down is this switch. So I have to switch these wires here. These two are mixed up. So let's turn the game off. So this and this need to be switched. Just like so. So that should fix it. All right, let's try it again. Is this fun? Are we having fun? <laughs> it's so tedious, <laughs> this work. Uh, this is actually is more tedious than I think the woodworking. All right, so we know the one player button starts. Let's, uh, one player game only. We'll have to test this two player button later. All right, so up, down, all right. So down's working, up's working, and right's working. Okay, good, so we're all done. 
So control panel's working, it's all rebuilt, and uh, looks good. All right, so what do you want to do now? I, I think we need to uh, move on to the woodworking. Um, I really want to get all this done today, so we'll see what happens. So we have the, the, the biggest job we have is this up here, okay? And uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about this. Um, because we got that big gouge up there that we have to get rid of, and so I think I'm going to put the game on its side, and we'll attack it from here, and I'll put the game on on its left side. So let me, uh, well, let's uh, let's secure the control panel so it doesn't fall off when we do this. So let me come in here and just latch this down. And we're going to have to clean the control panel some more because it got a little dusty when I was working on it over there. Okay. All right, so I need to get the game on its left side so we can come in from the top here and do our Bondo work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Let's get the cord out of the way. So I think once we get all this Bondo work done, we're kind of home free. And we got we to gotta address the base too because the base is kind of a mess. All right. Okay, so I'm going to put the game on its side. Make sure nothing falls apart here when we do this. So let's go ahead. There's a screw up here. Do I have enough room? All right. I wonder if I should get some cardboard just to kind of protect it. Okay. All right, the game's on its side here, and this is also going to be a good position to work on the base because this base is hosed. Oh man, we're going to have to replace that whole piece of wood. Ugh, do I have any wood here? Uh, that sucks. Uh, we're gonna have to figure something out with that base. The base is really hosed here. This is fine. It's just the back here. This piece of wood. I wonder if I can get some angles and reinforce this inside. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. Let's let's talk about what we're gonna do over here. Um, so we have to fill in that. We're going to fill in this with Bondo and then sand it. And I don't think it's going to be that bad, to be honest. Um, we glued that piece in there. And so now we're just going to fill it in with Bondo. And, um, and then we'll sand it, let it dry. We'll, we'll let it dry, then sand it. And, uh, and then we'll paint the whole top black. And I think that this will just disappear. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix up some Bondo. Uh, and uh, I'm looking for some cardboard. I don't want to get this all over the game on, the on this side here. So I'm going to come down here and just mix some Bondo up. And then we will uh, we'll just start filling that up. Um, I think that's going to go actually pretty well. So let me get a screwdriver. We'll get the lid off the Bondo container. And let's get some hardener. And I'm going to mix it on a paper plate. And, you know, this is body filler. I use this all the time. Uh, I, I actually love this stuff. It's, I, it's easy to work with. It, it, uh, it dries quick. It's really hard. It sticks. Um, you can get this at the hardware store, Home Depot, at an automotive store. Um, it's readily available, and it works really well. 
and I've really never used anything else uh, for this type of work. And I know there's other stuff out there that's really more designed for wood, but this works great with wood. So I, I keep using this stuff. And uh, so it's a two part. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna put some on a paper plate and then we'll mix in our little hardener. And we might have to do this in a couple steps here. Just kind of build it up. I don't wanna go put too much on initially. That's a lot right there, but it should be okay. And then I do have uh, the legit Bondo sp uh, spreading tools. Uh, where are those? Oh, they're right there. So we're gonna come in here and put a little bit of our hardener in. Oh boy, it's, stuff's kind of old. Nice liquid spurt there. And then we'll take our, our scraper tool here and just mix this up till we get a uniform color. And I know you guys have told me before I use too much of the, of the hardener. <laughs> It should be a very light pink color, not not salmon. But I'm just mixing this all up till I get a uniform color and get rid of all the gray. Okay. And you got to work kind of fast because this stuff sets really quick. Okay. So let's let's take a look down here, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna come in and start building this up. And I'm not sure how this is gonna go, but we'll find out. Um, I didn't sand that area and I probably should have. Like this is raw right in here. I wonder if I should take my sander to this real quick. I think we'll be okay. Let's put some in here and see how it goes. I really should sand this raw. I gotta do this really fast, guys, because we're gonna, we're gonna lose our Bondo if I don't work quick. So let's just kind of come in here real quick at the sander. I didn't really plan this very well, did I? So I'm gonna come in with my sander and just kind of sand the area around it. do it. So I'm going to try to do this and, and not be super messy. And we're going to have to probably build this up with a couple applications. I'm gonna let, this is gonna be the first application. I'm gonna let this dry, and then we'll come back and put some more on. And you can usually sand your way out of trouble with this stuff. So let's let's call that the first application. It looks ugly, but once we sand this, it'll look fine. And I'm getting some on the other side of the cabinet, which I don't want to do. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll be back. I know, it looks ugly. <laughs> it'll look fine, don't worry. All right, we're all dry here. It's actually been, uh, I don't know, almost an hour. I actually got a nasty sliver in my thumb. <laughs> and I just spent the last half hour getting it out. Um, I did end up lifting the cabinet up and just putting masking tape on the, on the top side of the cabinet uh, just to kind of protect it. And because uh, I didn't want to get any Bondo on that, on that uh, clean 
uh, side of the cabinet. So I'm gonna come down now though. I, I mixed up some more Bondo and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a second uh, application on here. Just trying to build this up even taller and uh, just, just duping it on here. And then later, after we build this up enough, we're gonna sand it and it'll be nice and square and smooth. I think I put too much on here. And I might have to take my X-Acto later. I mean my, uh, my blade. All right. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let this dry now. And we're just building it up little by little. We're gonna have to come in with the third application. And right now it looks really ugly. And we'll sand this thing so it's nice and smooth. And it'll look just fine when we're done. Trying to square it up. Ah, oh, that looks ugly. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. And then I'll come back and we're going to put one more application in here. I'm going to wipe this off. I don't want it on the front there. Get some paper towel. Okay, it's ugly though. All right, let's let it dry, and then I'll come back and we'll build it up even further. Yeah, I'm not gonna put any more on. And let's just put a little bit more in here. Let that build up. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll be back. All right, it's all dry and I'm mixing up another batch of Bondo right now. And I'm gonna use that piece of wood as a guide to kind of help fill it in here and give it some shape. It'll just kind of save us a little bit of headaches when we're sanding. Um, so let's see if this works okay. really requires a lot of Bondo. Mm. All right. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I don't want this piece of wood to stick to this, so I'm going to pull it out in a second here. But I'm just going to use this to fill it in. Probably going to be one more application of this stuff, at least. All right, I'm just going to pull this off and hopefully it doesn't take the Bondo with it. Ah. Yeah, we're getting there. Sure is ugly. <laughs> All right, let's let that dry and then I think one more is going to do it. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll be right back. I mean, the other option here is I could have cut that off and put a new piece of wood on there. I don't know, we'll see how this goes. 
All right, this application's dry here, and I'm mixing up some more Bondo. I actually took my utility knife and just kind of cut some of the excess away, and that actually really seemed to give it some shape. I just kind of came in here and just kind of cut it while it was a little gummy. But honestly, this is actually looking pretty good here. We've got a low spot right here, and so we got to fill this in, and I think that's about it. So I'm going to, I think one more application is going to do it. And then we'll let this dry really good before we sand it. But I'm going to come in here again with this piece of wood and just attempt to kind of give it some kind of shape. This is a low spot right here. I think this is actually working out pretty well. Once we sand this down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good. And my goal, of course, is to make it look like this never happened, like I never did any work here. And the sanding is going to be key to that. But I just want to make sure we fill in all these low spots. All right. This is a lot of Bondo. I don't think I've ever used this much on a single repair having to build up such a large area, it really does take a lot. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can carefully get our wood out of here without messing this up. Uh, so, I think I need a little bit more in here. We're close. Looking right here, it's a little low in here. Might have to put just a little bit more. But I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and take an inventory of it. But uh, I, really wanna, I, really, I really wanna fill in this area right here. Let's see if we can do this with the wood. This spot right here. Ah, oh, shit. That didn't work. So we still have a low spot right here. Uh, it's getting uglier. Uh, I, I'm going to let this dry, and, and before it fully dries, I'm going to come in here when it's a little gummy and just kind of make a straight edge with my knife. And I think I'm going to have to fill this in even a little bit more. But this is filled in all the way. And then right here is the only problem area. <sighs> We're getting there. All right, I'll be right back. All right, guys. Uh, we're all done with the Bondo there. I, I actually, when it was drying, I, 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 yeah, I put one more application on. Um, there's no low spots. Now we need to sand it down. And also, while... I was waiting for it to dry. I kind of started multitasking a little bit. Um, I started addressing this base here. And uh, what I did was I reinforced it with some little uh, little angle irons. And I'll show you guys here real quick. And I also just kind of bondoed in some of the imperfections uh, in the front. And I sanded it already. And then I, I came in, I went to the hardware store and I got some little angles. And I reinforced the back here. And now it's rock solid, so that's good. So that was a success. So the base is fine now, we need to paint it. I, I sanded the whole thing down. Um, I don't know, I, I got a little antsy waiting for the bottom to, to dry, so I, I actually ran to the hardware store, got the angle brackets and came back. So that's all ready to paint. But what I wanna do now though, is I want to, uh, I wanna sand the top and see what happens. I think the Bondo has dried quite a bit. Uh, it, it's been, I've, it's been drying for about an hour, and I, I've been wanting it to wait. I didn't want to sand it too soon, so let's see what happens when we start uh, sanding this. Uh, I think I'm going to do it with the cabinet standing up. God, it's heavy. All right, so this is kind of ugly, but let me let's let's take a look here and see what's going on. Um, 
So let's take our tape off and hopefully, all right. And we're gonna have to correspond to on this side too. All right, so we got a whole pile of it here on the top. Now I bought one of those cheese grater things that, that, that the kit, they call them a uh, Gabondo cheese grater. And I've seen guys use these. I, I think there's a handle that's supposed to go on here, but I've seen people use them without the handle. And I'm just curious to see how this works because I've never used this before and maybe we can knock some of it down before we sand. I really should get a chair. But the idea with this is that we can really get the big chunks out of here and then finish it off with our sander. And it does seem to be working pretty well. Let me stand on a chair so I can see what's going on. Um, let's see if we can go a little higher at the camera. So I'm just kind of, kind, kind of coming up here with our cheese grater and just knocking this down. This works actually really well. And I just want to knock down the really high spots and that way our sander doesn't have to work as hard. And this works great. So I think this is going to be a success here. So I'm going to keep going here and just do this on the inside too. And this grater thing is is made for Bondo. It's um, I bought it on Amazon. It was like seven bucks. This is working great. So we got a lot on the inside to get out. So I'm gonna keep going using this on the top and on the inside and I'll be back. All right, we're all sanded here, and I, I do think this was a success here. I just took my palm sander and just sanded all of this as flush as I could, and we have a nice smooth top here. A little bit of chewed up stuff right here. The T-molding's gonna cover all that. We're gonna paint all this black. So I think this was a massive success. That looks really good. Um, and I think once we paint that and put the T-molding on, you'll never know we did that repair. Um, we do need to address this right here. And I just mixed up some Bondo and, and we'll do that real quick. Uh, I, I wanna tastefully, very, very tastefully do this. Um, I do not wanna use a lot of Bondo, okay? Um, so I just, I wanna just show a lot of restraint here and we're just gonna try to fill this in um, and, and not go too far beyond this. Okay, and I just want to keep it right on the little injury because we're going to touch this up with our paint and, and I don't want the, the touch up spot or my sanding work to be larger than it needs to be. So I'm going to just tastefully, tastefully put that on there. I think I'm going to take, uh, so let's just kind of come in here and do that. Oh, I just got some excess on there that I'm gonna wipe off. I think I need just a little bit more. But my area is already getting larger than I want it to be. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to wipe the rest off with the paper towel before it hardens. All right, 
think that's pretty good. I'm tempted to go over it real quick. One more time, one more wipe. Like just. I should probably just leave this alone. All right, we're going to let that dry, and then I'm going to come in with some high grit sandpaper and see if we could smooth that out, and then we'll use our touch up paint. All right, I'm going to let that dry, and we'll be back. Okay, so. I just actually sanded it. I came in with some 100 grit sandpaper and I just did it by hand and I just went over this whole thing. I actually got off most of the Bondo and so we're just gonna have to just really just touch up this small area with paint. And I'm just running my finger over and it's fairly smooth. Uh, it's barely detectable. But I just wanna get some of this loose Bondo off. But yeah, that repair was a massive success, guys. So we'll just come in here and just touch up this small area right here with paint. I might continue to the edge here. And then we, after it dries, we might be able to come in with some like 2000 grit sandpaper and just kind of feather it. And I bet you won't even be able to detect that that was repaired. So I think that looks really good. I am happy. All right, I'm wondering right now what we should do. Um, I kind of feel like painting the top of the cabinet really fast. Um, and then we'll touch up this gray. And I'm, I'm trying to decide how crazy I want to go with little touch-ups. Um, I'm actually thinking about letting some of them go because I, I think little nicks and stuff are perfectly acceptable for a cabinet of this age, you know. And it has just a little bit of little tiny battle scars. You know, this was unacceptable because this was broken completely, okay. And, and we really did a great job repairing that. Um, I feel really good about that. So when we paint this black and then touch up the gray here, I think we completely repaired what's going on here. But I'm thinking about putting the game on its side and uh, masking off the cabinet a little bit. And uh, I'm thinking about just hitting this whole thing with black spray paint on the top. Um, and then also I do want to repair, finish repairing the base. Right now we've only done two sides. I need to do the other two sides. Um, and if I put it on its side right now, I'll be able to get to those two sides of the base that I haven't uh, that I haven't repaired yet. So I think we're going to do that. And I want to put the wheels back on. Um, so let's go ahead and let's see if we put it on its side. I need to put it on the other side uh, because that is the side that I have not worked on the uh, the base on. So let's rotate this. And our base was repaired. So it feels a lot more solid when I'm rotating it. Um, uh, let's think about this. It's getting kind of tight here. I, I kind of want to paint with the, uh, the side of the game facing out the garage. Um, just for ventilation purposes. Yeah, let me go ahead and lay the game on its side and then we'll, we'll paint it. Okay, I have the game on its side. I, I need to clean that all up because we got all kinds of dust on it. So I'm just gonna spray it with Simple Green and we'll just kinda wipe all this stuff off here. But I wanna clean this really well before we paint it. So let's, let's just kind of wipe that down. Oh, I've been out here all day long, guys. It's, it's getting so late. I really want to stop, but I can't. I got to get this done. I know I'm not going to finish it today, tonight, but I want to be really close. Um, and if I can at least get this black paint going. Let's just clean it really good because this thing's filthy.
All right, guys, we're all ready to paint it here. It's dry. I also just threw some paper towels on here. I don't have any newspaper, so that's okay. We can reuse the paper towels later to clean up. But uh, so I just kind of mashed everything off so I don't get any overspray on, on areas I don't want black. And we're just going to hit this with a couple coats of Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Paint and Primer in one. Yes, my favorite paint. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to have to kind of come up like this to get all of our Bondo. And then also just paint this, really I'm going to paint the whole thing, but I, I really need to cover the areas where we sanded. So let's kind of come down here. Just hit this. And I'll do a couple coats. And uh, I'll let this dry uh, for about eh, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. And I'll come back out and hit it with a second coat. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll let that dry, and maybe I'll come back here actually and hit this. All right, we'll let that dry, and then I'll come back uh, in like a half hour and hit it again. Okay, guys, it's, it's actually the next day here. Um, I did put two coats of paint on this last night. Um, I think it looks actually pretty good. Um, I'm just kind of looking up in here. It looks perfect, so... I think we're ready to take all this uh, this tape off and our and our masking stuff. Um, now we're gonna have to paint our little bondoed areas right in here, which I, I think will be no big deal. And then I, I guess I'll save these paper towels and we can use these later to clean the game. Um, so all right, so that's all done. Now last night I I, I kind of got a little antsy and just started messing with the game while it was on its side. And I did do some stuff that I actually didn't film, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I just, <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting for this thing to dry, and next thing I know I'm doing other work on the game. And uh, let me show you what I did, um, and I'm going to finish this job now. So I noticed that this bottom corner here, someone had done some work and it was kind of crumbling apart uh, right there, okay? And uh, so someone had tried to repair this at some point and it was crumbling and the, the Bondo pieces were coming off. So I glued this back on last night. Now I also noticed when I was working over here that this piece of wood here was coming off. I mean, it was loose. And that, this, the sides here are kind of like, uh, there's grooves on the sides where it's all coming together and, and glued and, it's, and attached from the inside. And there was no way for me to get in here to where it was making the connection or whatever. And so this was all loose. So what I did was I just threw a screw right through it. And since I have to kind of come over here and repair this anyway, I decided to just throw a screw through here. And it just completely tightened this whole cabinet up. And again, since I'm already coming over here to, to do Bondo work, I'll just fill in the screw hole. It'll, it'll be gone like it was never there. And uh, it just really made the cabinet a lot stronger. And then I also just kind of started uh, gluing and repairing the base. Because I think I'm going to fill the base, I'm going to fill all these chips in with Bondo and just paint this whole thing black. And I think it'll look just fine. And the wood was all splinting here, splinting, uh, splitting here. And I threw some wood glue in here and just clamped it down overnight. So uh, anyway, we're getting closer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some Bondo, and I'm going to just kind of Bondo all of this uh, and just try to fill in all these cracks and then also take care of this corner. And then we're going to let it sit, and then, I, and then I'm probably going to start painting the base. I should sand all the splinters off of here first. And this base, the base is made out of some serious plywood. It's like an inch 
over an inch thick, so it'd be very hard to recreate. But I reinforced it on the inside with those L brackets, and it's actually really strong now. So, as long as I can make it look good. Kind of got to be careful here because I got a really nasty splinter from this last night. So the base is just about ready for painting. I'll just kind of fill in the edges a little bit with Bondo. I really don't even need to do it, to be honest. I can just paint this. It's actually very smooth. I, I pretty much sanded all the splinters away. Alright, anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some Bondo and I'm gonna I'm just gonna start filling in that corner. And then we'll let it dry and paint it. I mean, really, all that's left right now for me to do is just kind of go around and fix all the little imperfections, paint the base, and then touch up the gray paint after all the Bondo dries. So I'm going to go ahead and keep Bondoing this thing just like we did everywhere else, like the top. Um, I'm going to fill this in, let it dry, and then fill in our screw holes here. And then we'll touch this up with our paint. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. All right, I have some Bondo mixed up here, so... I'm just going to come in here and just fill this stuff in. And then I, I just want to fill in these little, this little gouge here. And I'm going to have to kind of cut a new T-molding groove. I have to put a couple applications on here. <sighs> you know, the more I use Bondo, it does it does really get easier. Especially when you get good at sanding it. And the thing is, you can't freak out if it looks ugly. Just don't worry about it. You can almost always sand your way out of whatever problems you see. Um, that's what's great about this stuff, is that it is meant to be sanded and shaped to what you want. So don't freak out if what you're looking at isn't necessarily what you want, because nothing is really permanent with this. I mean, I, I've, I've never bonded prior to, to being in this hobby, so this is all new. All right, I'm going to let that just harden. And then I got some extra here. I'm just going to start just kind of skim coating the base here. Uh, I probably should have, uh, <laughs> I got like sawdust all in this stuff. Probably should have cleaned this up a little bit better before I put this on here, but it's probably fine. I just had extra, so I thought I'd just throw it on here. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. And then we'll come back. Okay, while I'm waiting for that uh, uh, Bondo to dry, I ripped, I ripped the T-molding off, and then right here I sanded off, uh, someone put white paint here, and it looks like someone repaired this edge at some point. What's interesting, though, is they didn't cut a T-molding groove right here. So the T-molding was wrapping around this area and they just got rid of the barb. That was their solution to the problem. So I'm going to cut a new T-molding gro groove in there real quick. I'm going to get my safety glasses. And uh, so the bit I'm using is a Freud 2-inch router bit. Uh, 
slot, sl slotting cutter with quarter inch arbor and uh, it, it's uh, 1 16th of an inch and uh, I, I use this all the time and uh, so I'm going to come in here with my router and we're just going to just kind of put a T-molding groove back in here on this curve and I already have it all set up to go right into the old so basically I'm starting in the in the original groove <laughs> So we put that T-molding groove back in there on that edge. And then let's come over here and put a T-molding groove in our Bondo work because we also, um, we put some fresh Bondo here on this edge and right now there's no T-molding groove. And so let's go ahead and put one back in. And we're just gonna cut right through our Bondo. Just gonna make sure it lines up the same way over here and it does. Alright, perfect. So we're all ready for team molding there. And I'm gonna keep the router out because we're gonna have to put another edge on that uh, on that corner over here where we're doing the bondo work. That's really funny that they repaired this and didn't even attempt to put the groove back in. Really weird. And then we're gonna touch this up because they use like some weird white paint. Their, their, their Bondo work is okay uh, on this edge here. Seems pretty sturdy. Uh, it's just that they didn't even attempt to match the paint color, which is irritating. So I tried sanding as much of it off as I could and then we'll come in with our new paint and hopefully that'll all just disappear so, all right, I'm gonna, let's see, let's see actually what's going on over here. Is this dry yet? No, it's a little tacky still. I'm gonna let that go for another 10 or 15 minutes and we'll be back. All right, guys, actually, I, uh, I let the Bondo dry and I just sanded all of this down and including this corner and I just kind of shaped it with my sander. And then I also came in real quick and did my T-molding groove. So, um, we're pretty much done now. We're ready to paint, really, and, uh, so I just, I just need to paint the base black and then come in here and clean up the cabinet first and then touch up all of our gray. But we got all of the significant structural problems taken care of. And, you know, I talked to the guy that, that, that's getting this game and he agrees that we don't want to go too crazy and, and make this kind of a freakish restore. He's okay with a few original nicks and dings because it's character and it shows its age. But we just want to take care of the stuff on this game that is structurally a problem you know like this corner falling apart can't have it you know the base falling apart can't have it that that part on the top there where the t-molding groove was that we repaired can't have that it's crumbling particle board so really we're done with all of the bondo and sanding and cabinet work and now we just need to go through and touch it up um, i did get some spot glaze that we might try on some of these nicks but again, I talked to the guy and he agrees, you know, we don't have to sit here and scrutinize every single little tiny nick, you know. We want it to, to look like an original game. We're just really taking care of the stuff that's structurally an issue. Um, so anyway, I need to stop right here, okay? And we'll resume this in a following video. Um, and we'll resume probably painting the base black. Um, and then put the cabinet up, clean it up, and then start really uh, touching up our gray in these areas here. But I think the Bondo work was all good. That looks really nice. When we, when we put the t molding on here, we'll never know that that was repaired. Um, the base is gonna look really great once we paint that black. And, and, and that's such an insignificant part of the game on the bottom there. But I still wanted to just kind of square it up the best I could because the, uh, the plywood that they used to make it was all chewed up and now it's, it's, it's square, square-er, and it's solid, and it's not gonna fall apart. So anyway, all right, we're stopping right here. <laughs> Let's go back down to the, I, I, this video's long, guys. I've been, it is, uh, it's Monday, I, so I've been, I, I've been working on this video for about 12 hours. Um, 
because yesterday on Sunday, I was in the garage for 10 hours almost, like nine and a half hours. And then I did about an hour tonight. So uh, I, I, I know that this is gonna be a long video and I have a lot of video to edit and go through. Not gonna be fun. So anyway, all right, we're gonna stop here. Let's go back down to the basement and uh, hang out for a little bit and then we'll get out of here. And uh, I'll, I'll, we'll be back talking about this game very soon. So, all right guys, let's go back down to the basement. <laughs> All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, we are getting somewhere, and uh, I think one more video will be done with that game. I uh, just need to touch up the paint. I do want to replace the power supply. We'll do that in another video. And then we're, we got to get it ready for shipping. We're going to wrap it up and get it out of here. So we'll be doing that in the next video, I do believe. Uh, and by the way, this is my Sunday video. It is late. It's very late because I actually spent a lot of time in the garage making this video. I, I spent all day Sunday, like 9 or 10 hours, and then I worked on it Monday night and then Tuesday. Tuesday night I had to do VGO so I wasn't able to edit this video so here we are on Wednesday and I finally had time to edit the video and I'm releasing it now so I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, I, I think the game's definitely coming along uh, the Bondo work is good I I'm getting better at that Bondo I really am because you know I had no Bondo skills none zero prior to this hobby a a and and uh, I I'm getting comfortable with it and it's really good stuff so I, I'm, I feel pretty good so I think once we paint that cabinet it's gonna look really sharp so all right so so uh, I, I want to do some uh, viewer mail. I, I printed out a few here. And, and if you want to participate in this, uh, you're going to email them to me at blkdog7 at gmail.com. That's blkdog7 at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put viewer mail. Important. Uh, first one here is from Sergio. Uh, Hi, John. I've been watching your videos for a couple years now. I love them all. Always excited for Sundays. Um, I don't have the space or the money for a large arcade, so I built a MAME Fixit Felix Jr. cabinet from scratch. I wrote and have the pictures here. And, and his, U, his website URL is sergiostuff.com. S-E-R-G-I-O stuff.com, okay? And he's got, a, he documented his whole build and he's got pictures and all that. Uh, my question is, when it comes, it looks very good, by the way. Uh, my question is this, when it comes to multi-cabinets, even if you don't prefer them, would you rather have one that looks like a genuine game, have a fake theme like Felix, or a completely original theme? Uh, keep up the great work. Very excited to see what the Nintendo cabinet will be, Sergio. Uh, okay, so, you know, I actually have some opinions about this because I, I did make a main cabinet. It's upstairs. It it's, it's a Miss Pac-Man. It's kind of a stealth main cabinet, and that's what I like, okay? I didn't want to have something that said, like, Monster Arcade and, and Lightning Bolts and stuff like that. I, I didn't want any of that. I wanted I wanted my main cabinet to look like an original machine with the original joysticks and buttons and, and a CRT, and really, I was just interested in playing vertical uh, games, older games from the 80s. So that Miss Pac-Man cabinet is perfect. And I, I did not harm that cabinet. I, I just put a JAMA adapter in there and plugged the computer into that. And it's got the original harness so I can reverse that in a, in a heartbeat. Uh, now, if I were, you know, let's just say none of this existed and, I, and I, I had room for one or two games, I probably would do something similar again. I, I would build that, you, you take, like, take like a Galaga or a Miss Pac-Man type cabinet or, or build one from scratch and try to make it look exactly like a Galaga or Miss Pac-Man and that would be my vertical main cabinet, you know, or, or even Donkey Kong, you know. And then I would probably make a horizontal main cabinet that would look exactly like a Street Fighter. Something like that, because that, that to me is like the iconic, uh, you know, 25 inch horizontal cabinet, you know, like the Street Fighter, I would that's what I would do personally. I, I would not probably do original artwork. I think that that tends to go south, you know, and uh, and, and you know what? I would totally do a Fix It Felix. Now you say it's a fake theme, but that that to me is a real game. I mean, I know it's from a movie, Wreck It Ralph, but that's like a real thing to me because I, you know, I, I was this close to building a, a, a Fix It Felix. I, I really kind of wanted one, and uh, I, I I played the game a bunch upstairs on my Miss Pack because I have the little EXE file. I don't know. The game's just a little flat, but I really wanted to build a Fix It Felix because I think the cabinet is awesome. It, it screams John. It's it's cute. It's happy. It, it's fun. It's kind of Donkey Kong-ish, but not. So I, I think Fix It Felix is a great cabinet and theme for a main cabinet. And then also, you know, I would do like a Pac-Man or, or Galaga. You know, that that's my style. You know, I'd, I'd want it to look like a real cabinet. You know, Street Fighter for 25 inch, and then some kind of classic vertical cabinet like Donkey Kong or Miss Pac or Pac. So Sergio, that's what I would do. 
I'm not into the original themes. I I'm not into the control panels that try to pl emulate every control scheme, you know, with Tron joysticks and spinner knobs and, and f you know, four joysticks. I, I don't like that stuff. You can't play every game. Don't try to. Because <laughs> you're just going to compromise. I still don't have a garbage can. <laughs> I got to get a garbage can. Uh, all right, so here, uh, next one is from Scott. Uh, John, please see the attached JPEGs. Have you ever seen these up close? I saw them yesterday at my local Marshall store. The Pac-Man Ghost Light was $20, uh, $15 less than what it is on eBay, and the Tetris mug was five. Um, he says, I still want to see the Atlanta video when you get a chance, you're able to recover it, keep up the great work, have a great week. So yeah, you know what, I have seen these, okay? And this right here, I want, and I almost bought it. I, I saw it at Marshall's too, okay? I was in Marshall's, and they had this, this Pac-Man. It's a color-changing plastic Pac-Man. Um, I think it's kind of neat, and I think I think you can program it to change with the sounds, the audio to change colors. You know, it's like something you'd have at a, a dance party or a rave or something. But I do think that's cool, and I kind of want it. I, you know, personally, I've slowed down on buying junk. I'm trying to slow down on buying junk because I'm running out of room everywhere, <laughs> and the last thing I need is more junk in this house. So I was this close to buying this thing at Marshalls, and you know what? You might convince you might have convinced me to go back there and get one because I, I've been thinking about it. Maybe we, maybe we can get one and dissect it and do a little review because um, it is twenty bucks. And then this Tetris mug, which I think is a color, yeah, it's a it's a it's a heat changing mug. I haven't seen that one, but it, that that but that looks neat. I, I would definitely use that at work. Um, both of these items used to be at Think Geek, I think, and uh, they were rather expensive, and now they're really cheap at Marshalls. So yeah, I, I you know I might get that Pac Man Ghost Light. We can maybe put it back there. And by the way, the, the Tron is dark. I uh, I don't have the energy to pull that game out and, and try to fix it. <laughs> I sure hope it's something stupid, like the like the fluorescent light ballast or or uh, even the sound amp, because I've got extra parts and I don't I, I don't know if I've ever rebuilt that power supply. I, I'm not sure what's wrong with that. I, I know I got some suggestions from you guys, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so yes, I, I think I'm gonna get that Pac-Man light. Maybe we'll we'll try to get that the next week here. And then as far as the Atlanta video goes, I know, you know, I, I, I recovered all the video. I have all of the Atlanta footage on my computer. I haven't had the time to edit that video. That video is going to take me a long time to edit. And when I have free time right now, I, I need to be in the garage because the weather is good. Um, and I need to take advantage of that. So I can't, I, I haven't been able to bring myself to edit that video because I know it's going to take me all day to, to make that video. And I, I need to do that soon. I, I know, Scott. So thanks for your patience, but uh, soon, hopefully. All right, next one is from Fred. Uh, hey, John, I watched your old Donkey Kong cabinet review video, and it got me thinking. You said that King of Kong, Fistful of Quarters, inspired you to get into the hobby. I was curious what, what it was like watching that movie. Did you sit in the theater or on a DVD? Did you immediately start checking Craigslist for cabs? Did you lie in bed awake at 1am thinking about arcade cabs for a few days? Or did your arcade obsession gradually build once you found the arcade communities like build your own arcade controls and Clov? Uh, anyway, thanks and always thanks for making these great videos and doing what you do. Uh, Fred from Gilroy, uh, AKA Namco51. And, and by the way, Namco is a regular on the John's Arcade forums. Hi, Fred. <laughs> P.S. Stop picking up games and get back to restoring before it gets too cold. All right, so King of Kong, yeah, I, I got into this hobby. King of Kong pushed me into this hobby, okay? Now, I, I had already had that in me, though. Like, you know, I, I, it was my dream always as a kid to have a Donkey Kong. I mean, that was what I wanted, right? That was my favorite game, Donkey Kong. And so when I saw King of Kong, and I saw it on DVD, and when I saw that film, I was like, what? You can own these games? <laughs> you know, because Steve Weeby had one in his garage. I'm like, I'm like, I need to get in on this. I need a game. I, I need a Donkey Kong because I want to play Donkey Kong. And so I talked my wife into it. And we and so I, I immediately, like almost immediately started looking for one. Now, I didn't find Clov at that time, okay? And I didn't find uh, BYOAC, okay? So I started looking on eBay. That's where I looked, okay? And I looked and looked and looked and looked for a week or two, okay? And I wasn't very patient. And, and so I bought one on eBay. I paid a lot for it. I know I've told this story before, but I'll tell it really quick again. I overpaid for it. 
The game was shipped, shipped here via Pilot Air, and I picked it up in that same warehouse where we got computer space, okay? Remember we went to that, that, that warehouse in Connecticut, and I picked up the computer space? Well, that's where I had my Donkey Kong shipped to, okay? So I went to that warehouse, I picked the Donkey Kong up, I brought it home here, all excited. The thing was all wrapped up in cardboard and shrink wrap. I threw it in the Explorer and brought it here, and then I, I, I unshrink wrapped it, and mind you, I know nothing about this, these games, okay? And, I, and then I, I, I removed it, and I plugged it in. Okay, and actually, I'll, I'll, I, I think I have a photo I can show you right now of when I unwrapped it. Let me show it to you right now. This is me unwrapping the Donkey Kong. So as you can see, I, I'm very happy right here. I just got a Donkey Kong, right? I'm smiling. <laughs> it's the best day of my life. Well, so I, I plug it in and nothing happens. Like nothing happens, right? It doesn't work. And then, uh, so I think to myself, well, let's look inside, right? And uh, so I removed the back door and the monitor falls out because the guy that sold it to me and shipped it to me did not bolt the monitor down, okay? And, it, and the monitor just destroyed the inside of the cabinet. It, 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 it ruined the PCB. There was, you know, like uh, capacitors and, and parts uh, that were just on the bottom of the cabinet that were, that were ripped off the PCB. So at that very moment in time, I was thrown into this hobby and had to start learning how to fix stuff because I had to fix that game. Okay. And, and I was all alone because the guy I bought it from was in Texas, you know, and I'm, I'm out here on the East coast and I didn't know anyone in this hobby. So basically I worked with him and he, he ended up being a good guy. He took care of me, right? He sent me a new monitor. Uh, I think a new PCB. I don't remember, but he kind of walked me through it. And as I'm doing all of this, I'm researching and Googling this like crazy. And, and then I ended up on Clove. And, uh, and then people on Claw were helping me, and, and, and that was it, you know, I was bit by the bug, and then, and then I wanted to get another game, you know, and, and, and yes, I was laying in bed dreaming about having this, you know, and, and, and anticipating, waiting for the day for that thing to show up, I mean, it was a magical, magical, magical time, I mean, I was besides myself, like, oh my god, I'm gonna get my own arcade game, I mean, that is... The, dr the dream, I mean, I mean, holy cow, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, I worshipped this stuff, you know, if I had a dollar or a quarter, I mean, that's all I wanted to, I, I, th that was the only thing I wanted to spend my money on was putting the, those quarters in these games and to have one and, and be able to play it anytime you want and I don't know, yes, so, uh, so I don't know, did that answer? Uh, my, my obsession gradually built, you know, but what, what really helped, you know, was meeting people too. You, you gotta get out, if you wanna go in this crazy, you gotta meet people because then you start learning. You, you meet people who are smarter than you, as, ask questions, you know, I asked a lot of questions. In the beginning, I was super annoying. I asked so many questions because I really wanted to understand this stuff. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm going to be back hopefully very soon uh, with the next part in this restore series because I, I was hoping to get this game done. Uh, well, I wanted to get it done Wednesday, which is tonight. It didn't happen. So I'm going to work on it again tomorrow night. And then uh, I, I believe we're going to do an Arcade Outsiders Thursday night. So go to Arcade Outsiders. Yeah, no idea what happened here. The audio cut out. I, I honestly don't know what happened because my batteries were not dead. But anyway... Go to ArcadeOutsiders.com, and I have all the details, uh, or I will post all the details when the next live show is. Anyway, uh, subscribe, VideoGameOutsiders.com, ArcadeOutsiders.com, all that stuff. I, I have no idea what I'm saying here. I I'm sure it's something like that. So, anyway, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this episode. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to sync this up. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, oh, Play the popcorn door there. Uh... Anyway, all right, lay, 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 later, all right, guys, later, and bye. <laughs>